Hello and welcome to yet another question on Z test and T test. Let us go through this question and then we'll see what are those three important considerations that we need to check before solving any question. Those three considerations you remember those are sample size represented by N, population size if it is given represented by capital N and number of tails. Is it going to be a one tail or two tail test? So first let us read this question and then we'll see about these three parameters and what we need to do with this. With a sample of 25 vehicles, sample of 25 vehicles, the researcher finds that the mean miles per gallon for the car is 52.5 miles per gallon with a standard deviation of 14. Now very important, the opening line is talking everything about sample. So this mean and standard deviation are also related to this sample. So can I write it down over here? X bar is 52.5 miles per gallon. Standard deviation is, I believe it was, okay, it was 14. Small n is 25. All these values are already evident from this first line itself. And the standard deviation, I'll call it standard deviation of S sample this time around. It is not population this time. Do these results indicate the population mean might still be 50? Population mean might still be 50. So they are saying population mean is 50. In first case they are saying it still might be 50. In second question they are saying the population mean has increased from 50 to 52.5. So again population mean is still 50 but they are expecting that it might have increased to 52.5. We need to check for that. So there are two questions that we need to solve over here. First one is population mean is still 50. Second one is population mean has increased from 50 to 52.5. Now as for this analysis, sample size, what is the sample size over here? We have 25. So what is the sample size? It is small. Population size, there is no mention of population size. So what does this all this information tell me? Sample size of 25 that is small. Remember that chart we make size large and small large goes with z small is further divided into variance of population known and not known if it is known we go with z if it is not known we go with t so here we are in a situation where size is small so we are into this branch and population variance is not known. We know population, instead we know sample variance. So population variance is not known. So size is small and small is also not known. So we end up with a T test this time. Okay, sample size is small and in small you could have known the population variance or you may not know. If we were knowing it, we would have gone for Z but we do not know. Variance do we do know, but we know variance of sample. We do not know variance of population. So we are going into T test. So first step is telling me that I will be going for T test. Second step tells me which formula do I need to use. Remember we had two formulae. One was X bar minus mu upon standard deviation upon root n. And then another one was X bar minus mu upon standard deviation upon root n multiplied by n minus n upon n minus 1. Remember we had these two formula and second step tells me which formula to use. Is population size known? If population size were known I would have taken this formula but because here I do not know the population size I will take this formula. Okay. So second condition is telling me that I will be going with first formula and number of tails. Number of tails in first question population means still might be 50. So in first case number of tails look to be two tailed for first question and second question is population mean has increased. 
so in second question it has increased so they are saying it is a one tail because they are only talking of increased so for second question we have a one tail so this is how we'll go we'll make use of t test first formula but for first question i'll check for two tailed and second question i'll check for one tailed now what is this two tailed and one tailed where do i check it we'll see when we get there for now let me solve these questions you can download these pdfs from our website adityaclasses.co.in all these videos that we are shooting over here we are studying over here their pdfs exact pdfs are available at our website adityaclasses.co.in you can get those pdfs from the, there for reference anyways now we start with our first question we will make use of t test with this formula x bar minus mu upon standard deviation and now i can say that it is standard deviation of sample earlier we make use of general standard deviation but now i know it is standard deviation of sample upon root n this gives you what is x bar x bar is 52.5 x or oh sorry mu is 50 so we get 52.5 minus 50 upon standard deviation standard deviation is 14 it will become 14 upon root n n is small n is 25 so what do we get we get a 2.5 upon 14 upon 5 giving me 2.5 multiplied by 5 upon 14 giving me a total value of 12.5 upon 14 or a final value of 0.89 so my value of t practical is 0.89 now we need to go and check t theoretical for that we will need to import our t table so let us import the t table so here we have our table imported here we have this is students t distribution table now if we have a look at this table we see that here we have alpha 0.1 0.05 0.25 and so on so 0.1 becomes alpha 10% level of significance 10% 5% 2.5% 1% 0.5%. So these are different level of significances and level of significances when when you are using a one tail test. Understand? If you are using one tail test, these are your level of significances. If you are using two tail test, suppose I am checking one tail 5% and degrees of freedom let's say r 6 so one tailed 5% one tailed this is one tailed and 5% this is one tailed 5% one tailed 5% degrees of freedom being 6 this is one tailed 5% degrees of freedom 6 what is the scenario in our question what are we looking for in our question we had two questions one question is one tailed another one is two tailed for now we are solving the first question first question happens to be first question happens to be a two tailed test the population mean might still be 50 they are not saying increased or decreased they are they are saying still be 50 so it is a two tailed test 5% two tailed test 5% two tailed test 5% two tailed test 5% means one tail will contain only 2.5% if we had two tails and we had a total of significance available of 5% so it 
so one tail would contain 2.5 and this would contain 2.5 this table gives me areas of this one tail so for our example what is our example our example is two tailed 5% Two tailed five percent, so one tail becomes two point five. So I will not be checking this, rather this. Two tailed five percent is this. This is two tailed five percent. Though it is written as two point five percent, but for me it acts as two tailed five percent. This will be the line that I'll be checking. And what are my degrees of freedom? If you look over here, it is degrees of freedom. What is degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom are n minus 1. What is n for our question? n for our sake is 25. So degrees of freedom become how many degrees of freedom do we get? Degrees of freedom becomes is equal to n minus 1 that is 24 minus sorry 25 minus 1 25 minus 1 is equal to 24. My degrees of freedom are 24. So, in two tailed, in two tailed, 5%. Each tail gets 2.5%. This is two tailed 5%. For one tail 2.5, this is. For two tailed 5%, this is the scenario. So, Two tailed five percent level of significance. Each tail will get two point five and degrees of freedom are twenty four. We have degrees of freedom as twenty four. This is the value of T. So T practical was point eight nine, T theoretical. The theoretical is 2.064, 2.064, understand how we got here, we had a two tail test at 5% which we analyzed over here, our question is two tailed at 5%, so each tail gets from 5% each tail gets 2.5%, so here I will be checking 2.5%, once you are in this table you need not worry if it is two tailed or one tailed, you know your tail is of 2.5%. So you'll come to 2.5%, degrees of freedom 24 is 2.064. So T theoretical is 2.064. Now my analysis would be as T practical is less than T theoretical, therefore null hypothesis is accepted. That is, what should be our null hypothesis? That both means are same. That is, there is no change in mean MPG. So, it does look like 50 and 52.5, but this is only due to randomness. My analysis suggests that there is no change in miles per gallon. Null hypothesis is accepted. This was our first question. Now, quickly go after our second question. What was our second question? Second question was population mean has increased from 50 to 52.5. So, numerically, we will still be using t-test because our sample size is same, small, population variance is still not known. So, again, we will be going with the same question, the same values. So, I will be again making use of that same formula which is x bar minus mu upon standard deviation upon root n with standard deviation being of sample, I get 52.5 minus 50 upon Standard deviation given was 12 or 14. Standard deviation given was 14. Standard deviation being 14 upon 
root 25 making it 2.5 upon 14 upon 5 making it 2.5 multiply by 5 upon 14 giving me a value of 12.5 upon 14 will give me a total value of 0 0.89 so once again the practical is 0. 89. What about T theoretical? T theoretical, look here carefully. One tailed, second question is one tailed because you are talking of increased from 50 to 52.5. It is a one tailed test, one tailed 5%. One tail, this is only one tail, one tail. 5%. So, this will be my column that I will check. This is 1 tailed 5%. So, 1 tailed 5% degrees of freedom will still be 24, but the value this time will become 1.711. 1.711. So, what will be your analysis? T practical is less than T theoretical, hence null hypothesis is accepted. And so analysis once again would be the mean mileage that is miles per gallon has not changed. This is our analysis. So this was a question on t-test. We'll take some more questions on t-test so that we know how to look this table. Anyways, for now, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.